At 1.19 in the morning, flight MH370 sends a routine good night. Two minutes later, it vanishes from radar, instantly and without warning. Investigators have pieced together those final three minutes using hidden radar data and satellite signals, revealing actions that cannot be explained by any simple malfunction. What really happened before the world lost MH370 completely? At 1.19 in the morning, Flight MH370's co-pilot speaks for the last time. His words, Good night, Malaysian 370, are calm and routine. This is the standard handoff between Kuala Lumpur and Ho Chi Minh controllers, a checkpoint every international flight expects to pass without incident. Moments later, as the aircraft approaches the Agari waypoint, air traffic controllers on both sides prepare for a seamless transfer. Procedures are clear. The crew should switch radio frequencies, check in with the next sector, and confirm their presence as they cross into Vietnamese airspace. But after that final sign-off, Ho Chi Minh's controllers wait for a call that never comes. They reach out repeatedly, their radio calls met with silence. On radar screens, MH370's transponder code and flight data vanish without warning. For Kuala Lumpur, the absence is initially brushed off as a minor coordination issue, perhaps a missed frequency change or a simple delay in routine reporting. There is no immediate alarm, no scramble or emergency call. The system is built for order, not for sudden disappearance. Controllers follow protocol, checking with each other and cycling through standard troubleshooting steps. Minutes pass as they attempt to re-establish contact. The lack of response is puzzling, but not yet treated as a crisis. If you want more stories like this, like and subscribe. Your support helps us investigate the stories that still need answers. Only with time does the weight of the silence grow. In those early moments, the disappearance is a procedural anomaly, a gap in communication, not an emergency. The handoff that should have been forgettable becomes a turning point leaving controllers with unanswered questions and the first traces of uncertainty. At 1.21 a.m., Flight MH370's transponder and ADSB signals vanish. No warning, no gradual fade. One moment the aircraft is a clear, cooperative target on civilian radar, broadcasting its identity, altitude, and position. The next, it is invisible to air traffic control stripped of every digital marker that allows routine tracking. This is not a loss caused by range or weather. It is the abrupt end of all secondary surveillance, the kind that relies on the aircraft's own systems to respond. Controllers are left with questions and a blank screen. The disappearance of both transponder and ADSB signals at the same instant rules out ordinary technical glitches. The radar return does not simply weaken or drift. It stops cleanly and completely. In the absence of a distress call or any sign of technical failure, investigators face a scenario for which standard procedures offer no ready explanation. With the cooperative data gone, the investigation cannot rely on a single source to reconstruct what happened next. Instead, Four distinct families of evidence become essential. First, the last civil secondary surveillance radar and ADSB track. These define the final seconds of normal flight. Second, the military primary radar returns, which detect the aircraft as an unidentified echo after its transponder goes silent. Third, the satellite handshake data, which provide a sequence of time-stamped signals across the hours that follow. Fourth, the performance models for the Boeing 707, which allow analysts to interpret the remaining traces in terms of speed, altitude, and heading. No single data set is enough. Only by integrating these four streams, each with its own limits and uncertainties, can investigators attempt to map the aircraft's path after the blackout. 
From this point, the story of MH370 moves from human routines to forensic reconstruction, guided by the scattered signals left behind. Military radar plots reveal the aircraft's path after the loss of transponder signals, an arc that does not simply drift off course, but bends sharply west in a controlled sweep. Analysts have scrutinized the geometry of this turn. The path is not erratic or shallow. It traces a pronounced left bank, more acute than standard autopilot turns, and consistent with a deliberate input possibly a bank angle in the range of 25 to 35 degrees, though exact numbers cannot be confirmed without the unreleased raw radar sweeps. What stands out is the alignment with published navigation waypoints. After the turn near Igari, the reconstructed track passes close to Vampy, then Givel, then Igrex, each a named waypoint used by pilots to program routes into the flight management system. This is not the behavior of a stricken aircraft meandering on a random heading. Instead, the path follows a sequence that matches the logic of manual flight management, using the tools and knowledge available to a qualified crew. Radar analysts point out that such waypoint to waypoint routing would require active selection in the cockpit, either by entering waypoints into the flight computer or by using heading select to follow a precise path no known system malfunction would cause an aircraft to track this sequence by chance. The evidence from the radar geometry, sharp, purposeful turns, and alignment with navigational fixes strongly suggests that someone was directing the aircraft through this phase, shaping its route by hand rather than by accident or automation. Radar coverage across Southeast Asia is a patchwork of overlapping fields each defined by national boundaries and the technical limits of ground-based systems. After the left turn over the Gulf of Thailand, MH370's route threads a corridor that falls between the strongest surveillance zones. The aircraft crosses from the Kuala Lumpur Flight Information Region into the edge of Thai airspace, an area where radar responsibility and attention often blurs. At cruise altitude, a Boeing 777 should be visible to both Malaysian and Thai military radars, but the path taken by MH370 skirts the margins of these coverage envelopes. In practice, the radar picture is never seamless. Even high-powered military systems, like the RAT-31 DL at Butterworth, have detection limits shaped by terrain, the curvature of the Earth, and the operational focus of their operators. A former 777 pilot notes that this route is not a random drift, but follows a line that minimizes continuous exposure to any single radar. By flying near the flight information region boundary, the aircraft avoids lingering in the heart of any one country's surveillance zone. This is not a guaranteed cloak of invisibility. Returns are still possible, but it complicates detection and response especially when coordination between neighboring states is imperfect. The last confirmed radar return comes from the northwestern Malacca Strait, just as the plane moves beyond the practical range of both Malaysian and Thai systems. After that, no radar system in the region picks up the track. The result is a prolonged period where the aircraft's position is no longer fixed by ground-based sensors leaving only satellite handshakes to trace its progress across the Southern Ocean. For investigators, the path looks less like a technical accident and more like a route chosen to exploit the seams in regional surveillance. After the last radar contact, the only clues to MH370's journey come from a series of automated satellite exchanges. These handshakes brief routine signals between the aircraft's satellite data unit and the Inmarsat 3F1 satellite began again at 2.25 a.m. after a likely power interruption. Over the next six hours, the system logged six more handshake events, each marking a moment when the aircraft's systems confirmed their presence to the satellite. A satellite communications engineer says each handshake produces two critical measurements. 
burst timing offset and burst frequency offset. Burst timing offset reveals the aircraft's distance from the satellite by measuring how long the signal takes to make a round trip. When plotted, these distances create a series of arcs, each one a circle on the Earth's surface, showing where the plane could have been at that handshake. Burst frequency offset, shaped by the Doppler effect, helps analysts determine the aircraft's direction and speed relative to the satellite, favoring a southern path over the Indian Ocean. This sequence of arcs, with a clear southern bias, redefined the search area. The final handshake occurred at 8.19 a.m., and it marks the last known electronic trace, placing MH370 somewhere along the most remote stretch of ocean on the planet. The satellite data does not give a single point, but it narrows the possibilities to a corridor that reaches deep into the southern Indian Ocean. Aviation systems engineer Priya Ramanathan lays out the comparative strengths and gaps in the three leading explanations. The first, deliberate human intervention, fits the abrupt loss of the transponder, the sharp left turn, and the waypoint-aligned path across Malaysia. This scenario aligns with how a Boeing 777 systems can be managed from the cockpit, with switches, circuit breakers, and flight management entries all within easy reach, but it leaves motive and identity unresolved. No cockpit voice recorder or flight data recorder has been recovered to confirm actions or intent. The second hypothesis, severe systems failure with manual override, can account for simultaneous loss of communications and a turn back, perhaps in response to a fire or an electrical fault. Accident investigator Mark Evans points out that while some failures could force the crew to prioritize flying over communicating. No known Boeing 707 incident matches the prolonged, stable flight seen here. The scenario struggles to explain the precise navigation and the hours-long southern track. A third theory, crew incapacitation after an initial manual turn, is supported by the long, unbroken southern path and the lack of further radio contact. Yet the complexity of the initial routing, waypoint to waypoint, suggests more than a single emergency heading. Each explanation matches some evidence, but falls short elsewhere. Without the recorders, every scenario remains incomplete, and the core evidence gap persists. Official records still withhold critical radar data. As technology advances and pressure for transparency grows, the world waits for answers that only evidence can provide. In aviation, true safety demands full disclosure, not silence. The search for truth is not just about the past. It shapes every flight today.